Uh, welcome to this uh, short tech talk. <laughs> uh, we it's a, it will be one hour and 30 minutes, but I will try to wrap it up a little bit faster and leave you questions. But what it's about, it's about creating applications to monitor analysis service. And uh, for introduction, my name is David Fugal. I've been with OSIsoft six years. I, I mostly worked on uh, asset analytics product. And uh, let's see what we do today. So basically, it will be live coding against analysis service. What does it mean? You will see some Visual Studio, but you don't have to type anything. So you can just follow along. But as it's a little bit longer talk, I, I also like to keep it in a discussion form, which means if you have any questions, please feel to ask them during the talk. Um, just raise the hand, and uh, I'll repeat the question to the microphone. And uh, then we can have a little bit of discussion as well. So what problem are we going to solve? Uh, as I mentioned, it's about analysis service. And uh, first, let's identify some challenges that uh, customers have had with analysis service. Um, just by, by the show of hands, how many of you use asset analytics? Oh, awesome. That's why you're here, I guess. <laughs> OK, let, let's, let's talk about some challenges. And let's see if you have experienced something similar or maybe something else. And let's see how we can overcome those now with the new version uh, of analytics. So over the years, we have heard questions from uh, support and customers. One, one question is sometimes, all my analysis are running. They are green. But how, how do you know that they actually get good values? So like. You, uh, you, you might let me see if I laser. You might see those green check marks all over the place, but uh, are you sure that analysis actually evaluate numbers what you expect to? All my analysis are running, but some outputs don't have values. When the questions one might ask, okay, when did those analysis actually trigger? Yeah, they are running, but when did they trigger? And are some of them lagging behind, or is there's, is there any other problem with those analysis? Are there any analysis that skip evaluations? So there are ways to get some statistic that yeah, there is some skipping going on. But which analysis exactly? And how often do they skip? How many calculations have they skipped? When did the skipping start? Yeah, it's not easy to find. So and uh, yeah, let's see also how often some of those analysis trigger which skip. It means they might trigger really often. So I have some some analysis in error. So. Some customers have huge systems, like uh, hundreds of thousands of analysis. Some are in error. That's fine. They, 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 they're supposed to be in error because maybe they haven't been hooked up. But how can I be sure that any other analysis is not in error? Can I, can I find analysis which, is, which are in error by their error text and uh, may, make sure that uh, everything else is running? Um, to do any, uh, any, uh, are any of those questions kind of relevant to you, or have any uh, resonated? Yeah. I can see some nodding. Awesome. And getting answered answer to those questions has been pretty hard, quite a challenge until now. So we, we just released 2018 SP2 a couple of days ago, um, 2018 SP2 is a version of my server. And it makes it possible to query analysis runtime information using AFSDK. And let's explore what it means exactly. And uh, let's do it conceptually uh, without going into the details yet. So if you think you have a system of analysis, 100,000 of analysis, and you want to get information about those, the first thing you might want to do is to narrow down the list of analysis. How will you do that? So you, you have probably some criteria in mind. I, I like to see information about analysis which are in error, which are lagging. So in your mind, you will probably say, OK, I, I, I want to narrow it down to something which um, makes sense to me. For, in, for example, here, let's look all the analysis from this wind farm database, uh, which has average lag greater than 10 seconds. So if you have a huge system, it probably narrows it down to something, maybe just a handful of analysis. Once you have done that, then next question is, what information do you want about those analysis? Uh, because you can ask anything. In this case, let's say we want to know to which elements those analyses belong to, the last evaluation lag, the average lag, 
how long it took to evaluate the last trigger, so how, how expensive is the evaluation for those analyses. So you have a query, and now you have also information you want to get about those analyses, but which come back uh, from the query. And next thing you will do is execute this query via AFSDK. And that will be done programmatically. So that's, in essence, what we added to 2018 SP2. And the rest of the talk will, will go deeper into that and we'll solve some of the example problems together. Uh, to, to, get it, could, to get started, let's look into the documentation quickly so I can discuss a little bit what fields did we expose. Uh, so far, anybody, any question, questions? Okay, so if I go to PySystem Explorer, open AFSDK reference, and let's search AF anal analysis service. So you might be already familiar with this AF analysis service class. You might have used it to queue uh, recalculations programmatically, and uh, that's still there. But what we added this time is a new method called query runtime information. And let's go into that. Uh, so just like the signature of the method is shown here, just like I said, we, uh, th this method takes query and the fields and returns some information about analysis. Um, I, I'm not going to go through all this documentation just to say that there are also some examples uh, in there that you can uh, start off from. Has anybody used AF search, the latest AF search? Yeah. So the syntax of the, uh, this query is pretty much the same as AF search. So if you have done that, you, you can use the same syntax. But now the question is, what kind of fields can we query by? So like th there are examples here, like we can use name, path, last trigger time. So how do we know what fields are available? And for that, we also added another property to AF analysis service class, and it's called runtime information fields. And what I'd like to do now, I'd like to go through all those fields, so uh, do, do you explain what's available? And if you have any questions, we can discuss those uh, right away. So fields you can query by and uh, get information back um, are typical ones, ID, analysis GUID, name, which is analysis name, that's uh, no big deal, category, description, that's everything which is available already in AF, and element name and template and also the full path. So this is all analysis configuration information. That's already something you can get at the moment. If you know analysis GUID, you can look up all those fields. But all the, all the ones below the path are actually runtime information. What it means is that this is information covered by AF analysis service while analysis are running. Uh, so each analysis has a, has a status. Typically, it's either running or stopped. Sometimes it's in er error or warning. Uh, if it's in error or warning, it also has a stat status detail. For instance, if you have a configuration error, then status detail of this analysis will say, say why is it in error. Next field you can get back is last evaluation status. So every time analysis evaluates, if it runs, it gets a trigger. Uh, it either evaluates successfully or it fails or it skips uh, three, uh, three outcomes. Mostly it's successful, but if it errors, then the question is, first of all, do I have analysis which actually evaluate errors? Errors, uh, basically calc failed, if you have seen it in a UI, calc failed. Division by zero, that would be considered failed evaluation. Then you can use this field to find if uh, there is any analysis which last uh, evaluated into error. And the next field, last evaluation status detail, will tell you why those analysis and evaluate it to error. And, uh, last lag. So lag with respect to trigger time in milliseconds. So event came in 12 a.m. and analysis actually executed like t 10 minutes later. Lag would be 10 minutes. That's a, that's a big deal. So that might be red flag. Average lag. So maybe analysis last evaluation lag was high, but it's just one off event. But average lag is low, so no, it's not a problem. Average lag is basi basically something which is tracked 
since the beginning of analysis service. So if analysis starts running, we just keep running, running uh, tra uh, track of the average lag. And if it's high, then you know you might consider that this analysis has some problems. Last elapsed. So how many milliseconds was spent evaluating this analysis? Typically, only a few milliseconds. But if you think about analysis, which has a tag average over three months, it could be a significant number of milliseconds. It might be too expensive. Average elapsed. So how expensive is to run this analysis in average? Last trigger time. So that's in case you'd like to see if there are any stale analysis which hasn't triggered. Let's say we look, OK, last trigger time was two hours ago. So what's wrong with this analysis? Doesn't it get inputs? You can use this field. Average trigger time. It's basically average time in milliseconds between analysis triggers. So if you expect that the analysis gets events like every few seconds, but then you see that for some reason this analysis triggers every 10 milliseconds, you know that there might be a problem. You might get events which have offsets um, by some milliseconds and something to look into. And then a few other statistics like success count uh, since the service starts. So once analysis starts running, we count all the successful evaluation error evaluation and skipped evalu evalu evaluations. So these are, this is kind of running statistic, but, uh, but uh, you can use that to determine if analysis uh, runs uh, well over a long time period. If skip count is going up, that might be a problem. So you can track that. So these are fields that we expose both to, to get back to the AFSDK program and both to filter by. In addition, we also uh, have a couple of directives like sort by, sort order, and max count, and I will show how to use those. Uh, so if you, if you want to get uh, lagging analysis, you might want to sort by the highest, the, by the lag, and uh, sort order that highest lag is on the top. So any, any questions so far? OK, let's make it more. Yeah, so, so the question was just for the recording that uh, if uh, AF analysis service object uh, references in the individual analysis or service, it does reference service. So it, 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 if you want uh, reference to individual analysis configuration, you will use AF analysis object. But this one is basically communication layer to analysis service. So it's a front end to that. And, and initially, it was designed to queue calculations, queue manual backfilling, recalculations programmatically. And now we added also the runtime query aspect to this object. OK. So first live coding exercise we will do is we will write the AFSDK program in C Sharp to explore running analysis fields. And uh, we also look how we can consume all this data we can get right back from analysis service. So let me get right into that. So the database uh, I will look into is uh, Wind Farm Green. Uh, it's one of our AF example kits with a slight modifi modifications. Most of the analysis are green and running well. and. Uh, we first, we will go and pull some information about those analyses. And we'll do it by uh, creating a C-sharp program uh, from scratch. So let me get into that. So let's start the new solution. Let's, see. let's call it So this is a standard console application. And the uh, first thing we would need to do is uh, uh, reference AFSDK. So if you start first time creating any, anything against uh, AFSDK, uh, we need to add this dependency. Um, so let's see. Let's add a reference. So where was that? AF 
SDK. Okay. And the uh, next thing we need to do, when now we have AF SDK reference, we need to get access to AF analysis service object, the one we just talked about. Uh, in order to do that, we need to connect to the AF server. So, and uh, to do that, we'll create the new Pi systems object. So there is a Pi system systems. So let's add a <coughs> reference to that. And then we'll do um, new Pi systems. And uh, let's connect to the local version of, of the analysis service, or basically a local Pi system or local AF server which connects to the local analysis service. So that's only two lines to get going. And uh, let's uh, also have a reference to the analysis service. Let's do analysis service is Pi system and analysis service. So that's all you need to get started. So I'm I point it to the AF server. So basically, this localhost is actually the AF server, and under the hood, analysis service object goes, connects to AF server, reads where is the analysis service, and then connects to analysis service. So analysis service could be anywhere. So yeah, yeah that's a good point. This is a AF server address. And one thing what you can do, let's see, analysis service, let's use IntelliSense, we can see what's available. So this can queue calculation old thing. Now we have those methods query runtime information and also this runtime information field. So first thing we can do is actually print out what runtime information fields this particular version of analysis service supports. So at the moment we have only one version, version out there which su supports this feature. So that's, that's pretty much what's in the documentation. But in the future, different versions of analysis service could add different capabilities, more fields, for instance. Uh, so let's do that. So we can do let's just uh, <coughs> join it analysis service and uh, runtime information fields and uh, let's also read line so we don't exit out and if I run it let's see what happens So I hit the debug button, so it's a little bit slower, but here it goes. So it connects to the analysis service, and here you go. It asked from the analysis service in the back end what are the fields, and just printed those out. So we know that we can use those fields in the, in the query runtime information in different combinations, and that's actually what we're going to do next. If you were to connect some old version of analysis service, you would just get an error that this version of analysis service does not support. Uh, this feature you have to upgrade to 2018 SP2, so it will give you back pretty clear error text. So let's see. Let's look into three options how to use this query runtime information. So let's uh, option one. It's the most standard. Uh, we just call it and see what ob objects we get back. And before we do that, let's also uh, agree on a simple query and fields we, we want to get back. So let's say. Query will be status running. So we just let's get all the running analysis. And let's say fields, what we want to get back. Uh, let's get back uh, ID, last lag, and last trigger time. So I can get back those three fields. And uh, with option one, let's uh, do, let's see, let's start with the var result is analysis service, and then query runtime information. And see, it only takes two arguments, query and fields. And the easiest thing to do is now just run it and see what we get back. Uh, uh, 
But other thing we, we might want to do is also be a little bit more explicit about this result. So at, when I used var result equals, but let's see what kind of object we actually get back. It says this result will be i enumerable of list of something. Uh, so what does it mean? It means that i enumerable layer means one single analysis and list would be uh, fields. And it, it's a little bit abstract, so we'll get into that in a moment, but just, just for the clari uh, clarity, I'll just spell it out here. So let's say um, i enumerable, i list, and let's see, what was it? It was runtime field value. So that's, that's an object you will get back from the analysis service. Uh, let, and if I run it again, let's see what, what information it will contain. So I'm running for the debug mode, so it should break into it. OK, but uh, we see that we got back 643 lines uh, in uh, enumerable. It means we have 643 responses. So that's kind of expected. We didn't narrow it down, just queries, get all the running analysis. So it not, might, might not be the super useful, but let's go with that now. And we see that each result has three values in it. So why, why three? Because we asked for ID, last lag, and last trigger time. So those are the three for each analysis. And if we expand onto that, we see first one is an ID, second one is a lag in milliseconds, and third one is a last trigger time. So that's what we get back. And now we can actually programmatically go and um, access that and print it out and do what we need to do with it. So uh, let me just print it out for starters. So let's do, let's see, first row is result element that's zero. In this case, I know that we have at least 600 rows, so I don't have to do any checks. Let's go with that and let's just do console right line and uh, let's do option one. So option one, how we get information back. And uh, first row, zero. Um, first, uh, let's take the second argument. And also the third one. OK. So we'll let's print, print all of those out. Um, one thing I want to point out, if you look, what is this front and field value? You can go into it. Let's not decompile it. Let's just look the uh, signature. It is just a simple wrapper class which uh, holds string and uh, some of the operators. So if you know that the first field is i is GUID, you can just use implicit operator to convert it into GUID. Uh, how, how to do that? So we can just put here GUID, and it automatically converts this first value into GUID. We know that the second one is a number, so we can just convert it into double. And the third one is time, so let's convert it into AF time. And if we run it, let's see what, what, what do we get. So let's start without debugging this time. OK, here we go. So we got back uh, GUID, correct? Uh, 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 last lag, and then the uh, AF time format of the time. Cool thing about this runtime field value is that you can do some conversions like a numeric, implicit numeric conversion. Instead of converting it to double, you can also convert it into int integer, for instance. And it automatically does it. Run it again. You will get back. I should probably narrow down the query, but yeah. It automatically understands it's a number and tries to convert it into integer, and you'll get uh, something which might be more presentable in a UI. So the second option to get uh, information out, uh, you might, might have noticed there are two overloads for this query, uh, runtime information. And the second option is uh, uh, when you have your own class where you want to encapsulate value. So let's do option two, your, your like own class, like a specific. Let's say you, you're working on enter that wasn't me. <laughs> uh, when you work on an enterprise application and you have some data transfer objects, uh, let's say uh, something like uh, 
public class um, runtime information, which you already have some fields defined, let's say public uh, GUID ID, and then let's go with the same thing, public int last lag, and then also public AF time last. If you have this kind of classes available, you want to pass around, and you don't want to pass around the AF object, then it's very easy actually to get the information back from query and convert it into this format. Uh, so you could use this overrides to um, or result equals uh, analysis service again, query runtime information, but we'll specify that I want it in a form of runtime information, which is this class you just defined. So you still put the query, you put the fields, but now you also have to uh, uh, define a function which converts those fields into this uh, runtime information class. Um, so basically, for each row, let me go to the different line here, for each row, you could say new runtime information, uh, where you would say that ID, ID is a um, GUID of uh, row zero, last lag is um, in, int of the, basically the same thing we did before, but just in a one go, you could actually get uh, your own class in, instantiated, row one, and uh, last trigger time equals AF time, and then let's say row two. And that's actually all. And uh, uh, let's print it out as well. Let me call it result two. Another thing you might have in your class is actually a string override. So you could have something like public override to string. And, and this one, let's, uh, let's um, call it option two. Uh, so uh, call, let's, let's just return option uh, option two and a similar thing id last lag and uh, uh, last trigger time okay so now if we do the same thing with it, let's take the first row and print it out for the option two result two and let's let's just uh, print it out Oh, this is actually different objects, so let's call two. Let's just uh, print out first row. Second option, we should see this object being printed out. Okay, just a quick run. And here we have option two, pretty much the same thing, but just from your class. Um, any questions so far or comments? How many of you deal with the web applications? JSON, any of that? Okay. So, so the third option is actually I'll show, show quickly how this, one, this information can be converted into JSON, like again in two lines. So you can use it uh, in any of the web-based applications. So let's go, let's uh, do now option three, and let's call it uh, dynamic JSON. And let's call it result three. So that's kind of similar to the option two, but instead of runtime information, let's just uh, create an object. So we query runtime information and we'll, we will create a dynamic object that can be converted into JSON. And uh, that, that could be done just using this uh, anonymous um, instantiation that uh, C Sharp supports. Let's see, yes. So you just new, and we can do ID equals uh, like we did before, but instead of saying it's a runtime information, we just say it's an anonymous object. And uh, let's print this one out and see what we get. Uh, first row three equals, so we know again we get at least 600 elements back, so we don't have to worry about it. And uh, 
let's see, cons console right line, first row three. And then we'll look into JSON as well. So this one just is a dynamic object, but that's a start. Okay, option one, option two, and I didn't prefix the option three, but you see uh, similar information. Um, okay, that's how to do JSON. That's uh, fairly easy. Just uh, let's use the, the most popular JSON framework available. So let's add a new get to JSON.net. Um, yeah, it's 208 million downloads, so must be something good about it. Uh, okay, we added it. And let's just do console. Let's take the same object and let's just pass it into JSON converter. Uh, so we have this first row, option three object here, and we can do a JSON convert, serialize object, this uh, first row three, and let's say it's, let's format it nicely as well. Okay, and uh, of course you can JSON convert entire I enumerable like that, but in this case, let's just do it for the single object and see what we get. So here we go, that's a JSON. That's kind of interesting though. I noticed that as a, a JSON goes and uh, serializes all the, JSON convert goes and serializes all the, all the objects as it can. AF time is fairly rich object, so it serializes it into multiple sub uh, objects. So that might, might be something which is not very desired. Last trigger time, and then you get about seven, eight different properties. Uh, but the uh, only thing you would need to do is here, AF time, row two, um, and then just uh, say we want to get local time. So and if we do that, we should actually get really fairly representable JSON. Uh, with a, with a with a time format that is uh, universally accepted by all the, all the clients which consume JSON. Okay, these are three ways to consume data. There are probably more uh, depending on uh, needs and applications, but just uh, just to get started, uh, let's see, recap quickly what we did. Um, so we looked into uh, AF analysis service methods. Uh, runtime inf information fields, query runtime information, and then we retrieved analysis information three ways. And runtime field value objects, user-defined objects, and also dynamic JSON objects. Any, any questions? All clear, okay. Let's, yes, awesome. Uh, Co correct, you will just get an error to say, which says, please upgrade. Yeah. At least the error is quite informative, so it, it won't be something, null reference exception or something. So, yeah. Okay. So next thing, uh, next part is, I thought maybe we can take a break from coding, um, unless you really want to see me finding more text at this point, but let's investigate a little bit those fields. So let's see. We, we posed three questions before, four questions that you might ask. And let's see how, how you could use those tools to get answers to those questions. Because during, during the last 15 minutes, I just showed how to use it technically, but we didn't solve any particular problems besides pulling back 600 IDs every time and the uh, last lags. Uh, so let's do that. I'll go back to my VM. And I'll, let's go away from this Visual Studio for now. And um, in order to streamline it, I'm just using this little application. So that's basically the same thing what I did in a console where you have a query and fields and uh, just show results. But uh, to avoid doing all that on a console and uh, recompiling, we just uh, pre-made this little application. It's a, a pretty much front end to what we already did. Uh, and uh, 
what we can do now is let's explore this wind farm database and see if we find any problematic analysis. And uh, we'll, we'll look into different queries, what we can make and uh, how, we can those how we can use different fields um, to solve different kind of problems. Um, so first, okay, let's just uh, run. This one is the default query. Let's see if it works. Just send it to check. Let's get uh, all the running and warning analysis. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought I'm talking about my applications here. Thank you. Let's go back here. Okay. Let me start all over again. So this is a little application what I, what, what, what I will be using uh, for the uh, for next uh, 10, 15 minutes to investigate the problems. And then, like I said, it's the same as the console application we wrote. It just makes it easier to put the query and the fields and then uh, scroll through the results, it, nothing else. Um, so some of the questions we looked into before. So all my analysis are running. How do I know the analysis evaluate good values? How can we look into that? Let's try that together. So let's first define a query. And uh, I don't know all those fields by heart as well, so I might refer back to our help a couple of times. Like in this case, we can use from the help last evaluation status detail. Um, or actually, let's go even last evaluation status. Let's uh, query all the analysis that are running, but last evaluation status is error. And uh, let's also print, it, print out this one and also the path. So if you search, hey, here you go. I have um, those four analyses, last evaluation is error, and the full path. So now we can, of course, go into those analyses one by one and uh, explore what, what's going on with those. But we can do even more. If you notice, there is this other field, last evaluation status detail. Let's use that to actually print out what is the error? So instead of the status, let's just uh, get three fields, name, the status detail, and path. Okay. So here's something. We have a few analysis which try to do string and number uh, operations. Something you might not know about it because those analysis are running. If we, if you, because if you put the status here, let's also query name and status, you see that the status is running. It's all green but uh, apparently they have actually some issues. So we can even go and look some of those. We see that they are all in uh, this uh, wind farm green database, Spain, Granada, uh, RB021. And if we just open up this one quickly, RB021, and uh, go to attributes. And we scroll, and you see actually there are some calc failed. And, uh, and there is one no result. So if you, went, if you were to go and investigate further, you might see that there might be one attribute which gets no result. And then this is being used by all the analysis in some operations. Maybe this attribute isn't ho hooked up properly or doesn't get values. And then all the analysis also start finding calc failed. Maybe it's OK, depending on your use case. Maybe you don't want that. So you might want to guard against it, do some if then analysis and no outputs. So.
three, the third. So I'll just do uh, as a path. And then new lag data. And the uh, last lag is a first one. So I'll just do, let's say, double. Let's convert it into double. Is it double here? Yeah. It is double. Um, row zero. And I think I also have to say that it is a last lag. Last lag equals. Then also skip skip count equals. Let's let's say it's an int, like we did before. Row one. And last trigger time equals. Let's convert it to AF time. And it's a row two. And uh, that should be all actually. Now it didn't it complain about something. Mm. So let's see if I miss something here. I don't. Last trigger time. Two. Let's see. I, I'll do this one. I think uh, I have to also say this one. The path is a string. OK, here we go. And let's run it in a loop, but let's not uh, go crazy about it. Let's also do some uh, pauses between. So let's do a wait task uh, delay. Let's run it, let's say, every 100 milliseconds. And I want to qualify it. <laughs> Might be too fast for production. <laughs> but uh, for my demo, it might be fine enough. And let's just test it if it actually works. So so while it's building, the idea is that every time we run it, we get the lags, and then we want to keep track of those analyses. Uh, here we go. OK, we got something back. So we got back some little bit ugly looking I enumerable. And we got two analysis back, two results. And we see our already known offenders, lifetime production, monthly and production spike. Uh, so seems query is fine. Now let's see how we can actually use this query to keep track if the lag is increasing or if the skip count is increasing. So for e each time we get this uh, result back, we might want to save this in, in, in somewhere. So let's use dictionary. So let's do dictionary string and a list of lag data. Uh, let's say lags. And then we say, and every time we just add to this dictionary. And what we can do now is uh, for each, uh, let's iterate over those results. If for each, over each uh, result, let's call it path and lag, because that's what each result is. It, it contains path and the lag information in results. Okay, And uh, let's add it to the dictionary. Result. 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 OK, let's make this one plural. OK, thank you. Uh, so we can do a list lag data. Again, C sharp is a bit verbose here, but the idea is just to keep track. And we can say if this dictionary, uh, if this lags, uh, try get value and the path and lag data. For this, if this path, we haven't recorded anything yet, um, then we will just want to create this new lag, lag data list where we keep track for this particular path equals new list. And, uh, and this, let's add it, lags, add, path and lag, a lot of path and lags here, and this lag data. So in the end, what we want to have is a dictionary for each path. We have like last 10 lags, 100 lags, 1,000 lags, however you want to collect. Uh, and uh, we want to just uh, keep indexing the, those by, by, by the path. OK. Uh, and then I think. What we also want to do is we want to 
uh, avoid redundant results. So one reason we added this uh, last trigger time here. So if you, if, if you run the script every 100 milliseconds, but your analysis triggers like every second, you would get 10 results the same. And we just don't want to add the, the same results. So what we can do here is basically if um, lag data, if, if, if there is no data to begin with, if the lag data count is zero, or if a lag data last, so last item and the last trigger time is not the same as the what we just currently got for this path, path and lag last trigger time. Path and lag, path and lag, lag data and last trigger time. If that's not the same, then let's add it, lag data add into this list uh, and just to see what we will collect, let's run it so it wouldn't remain that abstract. So I'll, I'll put the breakpoint here, I just run it quickly, a couple of, a couple of cycles and see if we can get uh, some elements into this list. So let's do a couple of more, so it goes fairly fast. Okay, and let's see, by now, what do we have in this dictionary? If we go over the slacks, we have two items as expected. And these are path, and let's see, for this path, this lifetime production monthly, we have collected seven lag information. So we see that the lag data uh, has been added for the, for the different uh, execution times different skip counts and also uh, increasing lag. So we see that uh, within this loop we keep adding to those two offending analysis paths. Now next thing we can do is let's process it. Let's see if we can actually derive, get meaningful information out of that list to actually send, let's say, notification. So for that I'll just uh, create a, a, fun a method called analyze and alert and I'll implement it right here. Um, let's see, void, analyze, and alert. And, uh, and this one, what it could do is just process this dictionary and see if there is at least 10 values for each analysis and then see if there is increasing lag or skip count. So I cheat here a little bit and look what I did before. Um, I don't want to spend all the time debugging, but what we can do is we can do for each and uh, path and lag pair in in lags and we could lags is this dictionary and basically what we can do is we can narrow it down to where um, we have at least 10 items so value count greater than equal, equals 10 so we iterate over each entry in the dictionary where you have at least 10 values collected okay and uh, just for the short end notation, let's call it for lags for path. Let's call this method with the variable. Let's create this variable and uh, call it value. And uh, the next thing, what, what, what we want to do is increasing lags. We want to detect increasing lags. Let's say we have a lag such as um, like 1,000, 1,500. Uh, 2,000, uh, 2,000, 2,500. So if we have these kind of lags in the list, what we'd like to convert it to would be something like uh, true, true, false maybe. Let's say this one is a 1,900, true. So that's a pretty naive approach. It's not like a very fancy statistics, but at least uh, what we can do is convert those lags into true, true, false list and see if there are any, if there are more than 50% cases where the lag was increasing in a subsequent e evaluations, that might be a problem. So we can do that. And uh, let's just use simple uh, uh, C-sharp methods to do it. So let's call it increasing lags. And uh, let's say lags for path. Let's take all the elements starting from the second element. So let's skip the first and let's select everything. Current element, uh, previous, 
And uh, what we can do is uh, we can do lags for path uh, previous and uh, last lag is a less than current last lag. And uh, let's convert it into um, true false list. Or let's convert it into a list where everything we keep only where it's true. So what, what, what is that doing? So we'll go over the slags for path, each slag data, and compare the previous slag to the current lag and just convert it into true or false and only keep the trues. Um, okay. And then interesting thing is a ratio. Okay, let's say it was uh, increasing in 60% of times. We'd like to know that because it's worse than uh, increasing like only maybe 10% of the time. So we can do something like lag increase ratio. And uh, we can do double increasing lags count. So we, how many instances the lag was increasing over lags for path count. Max count. And yeah, let's do that. Okay, so just uh, it would be a little bit easier to follow. Let's also um, let's also debug into it quickly and see what we can if it even works. So I'll run it quickly on the debugger. Any questions? Meanwhile, while it's compiling. It doesn't support all at the moment, so you have to do hands. Yeah. So I run it a couple of seconds here. It should probably hit this breakpoint. Okay. So in, th in this case, what we see that we have a uh, increasing lags, true, true, true. So in actually, in all every instance in this uh, uh, ten ten data points, we have increasing lags. And uh, if I go over that, we see that the increasing or lag increase ratio is one, so 100%. So that's something we can use as a, like a KPI. Okay. So I think, that, and this is pretty much the essence of it. The other thing we'll do quickly is also skip increase. So let's look skip increase. And what we can do here is just lags for path. Let's see if the last lag skip count. Uh, is greater than the previous one. So we just let's do the diff lags for path first and the skip count. So. And, uh, then we can detect those analysis, which maybe lag is not increasing, but skip count is increasing. And now one thing we want to do is just define the criteria. Okay, when we want to notify, we have those two KPIs. Uh, we, we don't do any notifications here, but we can just print it out, for instance. So let's do if lag Increase ratio is, it's naive, but it uh, might work in some cases, greater than 0 0.5. Or skip increase is greater than 0. Then we can do something like, OK, look into those analysis. So console right line. And uh, let's do, appears there is problem with analysis. analysis. Uh, and then let's print this information, path lag. Pair, path, and let's say I think it's a key for the path. And uh, what is the problem? Let's see, the lag has increased. <coughs> let's convert it to the uh, lag increase ratio uh, times hundred <coughs> percent of uh, of samples. Let's do that. Uh, while skipping has increased by, and let's do skip increase. So we can just print this one out and run it and see if actually some, something shows up on our console. Okay, I'll do it without debugging this time. And uh, let it run a couple of seconds while it actually gathers the data. and. I hope it prints out something. 
If not, then you can't leave this room before we have got to the bottom of this problem. Yeah. Yeah. Here it is. So we actually get notifications. And uh, now it's kind of flooding it because I run it often and I don't clean up the dictionary. But that's the essence of it. So, and uh, and uh, those queries are not that expensive, especially when you ask runtime information. You can ask it fairly often. I'm not saying like a, like a high frequency, but you can run, uh, even if you run it every second against analysis service, typically it shouldn't pose a problem. It does not go into any, uh, typically it doesn't go into the runtime, uh, into the, any, anything, any code path which is dealing with evaluations of analysis. And I will give some performance tips soon as well. Okay, here it is. So uh, to make this uh, program work correctly, here of course after you have done this analyze and alert, um, you would want to go to do clean up. So basically remove everything you just printed out and wait until next 10 data points come in because otherwise you will just have increasing, increasing uh, uh, lists to analyze. But I'm not gonna go there. Do you have any questions? OK. Um, I hope at least it gives you a kind of framework to start with when you need to develop application yourself and uh, adjust it to your particular needs and use cases. So yeah, just to re recap, it's a, a simple application. Uh, you can use, use all this information to feed it to the web, to feed it to the notification system. And, uh, and uh, I think some questions we got today also, day, today and yesterday at the booth was, can I do it in some other languages? So PowerShell, you can definitely use PowerShell, just use AFSDK in PowerShell, so it's all doable. And the fields we used in this case were last lax, skip count, last trigger time, but you can use anything which seems suitable for your use cases. One performance tip I'd look, I, I would like to add is, always exclude stop analysis if if uh, you don't need stopped analysis. And uh, one reason for that is that if, uh, if you ask, let's say, path of an analysis, and analysis is stopped, it means it's not loaded in analysis service. So if service returns back path, it has to actually load this analysis from AF just to serve with the path. So if you don't care anything about stopped analysis, then just exclude those. If you include stopped analysis and uh, ask for last lag, for instance, typically you would get just default values like a zero and, and uh, nothing really actionable. Um, okay. So, okay. Uh, this is my contact information. If you have any questions or follow up, if you have any questions now, uh, please let me know. I know we had a pretty good conversation already. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. Yeah, the question is if there's a flatlining analysis, just for my, to make sure I understood correctly. Flatlining analysis, can we use this tool somehow to prevent those problems happening? So I think not so much to prevent, but at least it would help you to de de detect those faster. So uh, it, it shouldn't happen, but if it does happen, you get a flatlining for some reason. At least if you write the application, you can detect say, something hasn't evaluated it should have been evaluating every minute, but it's flatlining. So you can either programmatically also uh, retrieve those analyses, uh, stop them, restart them, if that helps, or if not, then have a manual interve intervention. But it, it's more for the detection, not so much to actually help preventing it. Preventing it.
So if skipping is enabled, you will see a lot of skips. If skipping is not enabled, you will see very high lags. Uh, survey, uh, memory might be increasing uh, more, more than you desire. And in the end, it's not sustainable. If, if you don't have skipping and you have consistently higher um, evaluation time than trigger time, you br you, you, it will be in trouble in the end. So, so like, uh, at least with the event frame analysis, that can pose a problem. Other, I think by default skipping is enabled, so uh, for, the, for the regular analysis it will at least skip then and keep the service running. You might not just get every result or every, every evaluation, but the service should at least remain stable. So max latency, like a performance counter, yeah. And, and in this case, now you, may, you, you might be just able to also find which analysis might be causing it. Not, not via this. No. Performance counter, yeah. yeah. So, so it's implicitly available. So basically, if you get the last lag, then it, uh, it pre and you order by the sort by the, so, yeah. So, so the question is if we can see any active recalculation show up? No, no, not, uh, not with this release. So it, it doesn't hook up into recalculator at the moment. Yeah. Can I ask a question? So the last example where you were uh, putting everything in the dictionary, mm -hmm. um, instead of a console app, I feel like you could just reuse any event as the case. You could write that back into the tag and initialize that and initialize an update and everything like that without blowing up the main front track or anything. Mm -hmm. else. Yeah, correctly. Yeah, exactly. You can write it back to AF and then use actually analysis. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. You, you can, so if you don't filter by running, if you just, you can actually do status stopped, and, and I can even quickly show it for a few minutes here. So you can, you can get all the stopped analysis, and uh, maybe, maybe use case for that is like you can get stopped analysis for the certain criteria, and then programmatically enable those. So I think here you could do status. Okay. Mm -hmm. But the ones that are part of the template that are running, you want to make sure and track those, mm -hmm. and ignore the ones that are stopped where they've been overridden and stopped intentionally. Uh, so I don't, uh, yeah, we don't really distinguish. So if it's stopped, it's stopped. If, uh, like uh, whether it's from the template or not. If it's not running, it's, uh, it, there's only running or stop status. Okay, so st Steve said that uh, in case of those flatlining analysis which stop running in the most recent release, uh, some bugs were fixed which might mitigate those issues.
So what you could do, I, I believe, you can just get the ID of this analysis as a GUID, and then you can go to AF analysis object, find analysis by the GUID, and just set status disabled. Service will pick, pick this call up, or pick this kind of uh, change up, and just stop this analysis. So yeah, basically, you can hook up this information you get from, uh, from, from the runtime into, into actual AF analysis objects and then either stop, delete, whatever you'd like to do. Yeah. I have a question. Um, I don't code too many things, mm -hmm. but I guess my, the reason that you offer this as a not already developed thing, that a lot of people would use something that you would develop mm -hmm. to query um, why is it that you don't have a tool that we can all use to evaluate our analysis, as well, opposed to writing one ourselves? Uh -huh. Well, well, yeah, we don't have a tool either. So basically, what I used here at the moment, it's uh, uh, pretty much uh, a few, few lines of code uh, besides what I showed you, uh, and uh, and uh, j that's just for the demo purposes. So. And is it just because it's so new in the AFSDK, or? Would that be something that you would ever do to give, you know, to be part of the AF analysis suite of products? Yeah, or management tools for, um, for the yeah, analysis service. Yeah, exactly. Well, there is one. It's hard to uh, decipher. I mean, we'll, we'll note it down in the sense that uh, if, we, if some, of it, some of it can be incorporated into existing UIs. It is new, that's right, in the sense that we just. Okay. Uh, exposed it as a programmatic one for now, but we'll, we'll note it down. Okay. Yeah. Steve has comments. multiple plants. 
And so we, we want to give them multiple AS databases on asset servers to do engineering analytics and things like that. So, but from a monitoring standpoint, we're trying to get better visibility into the health of a asset server, the health of a database by using Perfmon, a lot of them to do tags for overall skip count, overall uh, on against that. And then you dig a layer deeper, we're trying to get what analysis is causing that problem. And so uh, this is a great first step into that. So one of the things I was wondering about if you've got any thoughts to is what causes a lot of these problems is how you set up the analytic in the sense of you're not reading from a tag as an input. Uh, you're not outputting to tags, and then those are feeding inputs. And all those are available as well in the analysis health statistics if you right click in the management tab and things like that. Are you guys going to continue to think about exposing some of that information as well? So if we're trying to do monitoring across server levels, we get one statistics of this server starting to look bad, it's skipping, it's starting to do stuff. As well as, okay, these are the analysis that are causing it, and it's due to the fact that they wrote it poorly. And so that we can then send something to them to say, hey, we're going to stop this programmatically mm -hmm. until you go in there and clean this up. So that was kind of, I just didn't know how deep in thought you guys have gone towards that. Thing. Interesting question, right? We took a slightly different approach. You are looking at it from a system administrator's perspective. Right. And then that's good. I, I like, but I think it's a mixture of both, right? right. So, so there's a lot of times if you want to use templates and things to administer that, you're not getting all those statistics on every one of them that's applying Agreed. to it. Agreed. And yeah. so, uh, um, in order to do that across the fleet of them, you know, and, and most of my end users, they they're not really looking at it for how health the performance of their yeah. analytics are. Right. 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 They, they give you the right number, <laughs> and, then, and then it works for the first few times until it causes so much lag on the system that it stops failing and other things do. And so what they think is the analysis service is unreliable. Mm -hmm. We can't use this, right? And so uh, then we have to educate them through how to go look at the statistics of the overall raw, mm -hmm. which yep. is what we've had. Yeah. And then we've been blind to this for a while, so we're, we're really excited to see what's coming, but, but this that continued thought process. Right. Well, I, I get your point. As long as you're thinking about it, <laughs> that's all I was asking. I mean, the whole vein of SQ2 being all about manageability and box solids and data stores like that just literally drops over the time. <laughs> because, yeah, that's core to my server, how we interpret my server now. I mean, we have so many obvious things on things over here. But, um, but in terms of analysis, it's just been startling to me for a long time. So we didn't appreciate it. It was a good first step. So, yeah. Yeah, thank you. Cool. Well, this will be very helpful. I will say this. Since I was here when Abacus was introduced in the first way, to see how far it has come forward in that time period, I'm ecstatic to see this being available. It, it has been a leaps and bounds paradigm shift in terms of how the cloud has been made. Great. Keep it up. That's what I, I guess that was my thing. All right. Great. All right. Well. Just one last thing before we go on. Um, please, I know many of you haven't had a chance, but please, I urge you to look at the release notes for the 2018 SQ3 that was released this past Monday. You know this relatively new feature, but lots of fixes. And some of those fixes are internal, which you, you guys don't have to worry about. But Certain that you'd be happy with this from a performance perspective, from a bug fix. 
base, 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 and all of a sudden it just flatlines. Back. And that's one of the ones that was said. And there are a few other ones. So I urge you to go take a look and evaluate for yourself whether it's worthwhile to the upgrade. Well, it's only 46 month planes, so we have uh, high expectations for this dollar. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, the way I would look at that is if I release something bad, you get mad at me for a long, long, long time. <laughs> You get mad at me until I release and then I never get from you. <laughs> <laughs> so just to recap it into recording as well, just get 2018 SP2 and don't be mad at Steve. <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you, everybody. Yeah, thank All right. You. <laughs>